Hey everyone, let's take a look at uh, this phenomenon called interference. Interference, which uh, can occur when you are doing uh, genetic analyses involving more than two genes, uh, two linked genes, that is. So, given a genotype, a generic genotype that looks like this. Well, uh, let's say and a genetic map that looks something like this, three genes, gene A, gene B, gene D. Let's say the distance here is 20 centimorgans. It's a capital M because Morgan is a name and distance between B and D is 10 centimorgans. Now, if I were to ask you what percentage of gametes from this individual right here would involve a crossover between gene A and gene B? So you would look at this 20 and you would say, oh, 20%. So 20% of the gametes would involve a crossover between gene A and gene B. Uh, same thing for these guys right here. What if I were to ask you, you know, what percentage of the gametes derived from this individual right here would result from a crossover between genes B and D? So that would be 10%, right? Because one centimorgan is 1% uh, crossing over, 1% crossover gametes. So, continuing on, what if I were to ask, to ask you, what percentage of gametes formed by this individual right here would uh, result, or would we expect to result from a crossover between this gene A and gene B and a crossover between gene B and gene D. So a double crossover involving these three genes. So to get that, we would simply multiply 20% times 10%, and uh, that would give us, you know, it would give us 2%, but how do we derive that? So convert this to decimals, 0.2. Convert that to a decimal, 0.1. Multiply that, it's gonna be 0.02 and convert that to a percent by multiplying by a 100 and you get 2%. Okay, so we can figure out, we can predict the number of double crossover gametes we, are, uh, we expect to see simply based on the genetic distance between uh, the genes involved in the double crossover. So, now what is this interference? So interference occurs when we see more or less than expected levels of double crossovers. So, and mechanistically, well, there are cells have mechanisms, some species have mechanisms that when a certain crossover occurs within a uh, tetrad, uh, some species have mechanisms that can enhance the uh, another crossover happening nearby um, between the same pair of non-sister chromatids involved that were involved in the initial crossover. So that would be a positive, that would be negative interference. Uh, an example of negative interference when another crossover is promoted. In other times, there are mechanisms that, you know, if a, one crossover occurs, there are mechanisms that prevent another crossover from happening uh, near to the first one. So we call this interference and we have a way to measure it. So interference equals one minus the observed frequency of double crossovers, and you can just use percentage, divided by the expected 
frequency of a double crossover. Now I should say this is, let me draw this one a little bigger. So the order of operations is calculate this value first, and then one minus that value equals the interference. So let's assume we observed 4% double crossovers, but we only expected 2%. And so what do you mean you observed double crossover? So you did your genetic cross and you're counting up the different phenotypes in the progeny or the offspring. Um, and you find that, oh, okay, well, 4% well, of the progeny must have resulted from a double crossover, but we know the distances and there should have only been 2%. What, what's going on here? Well, we see interference and we can measure that by just with this calculation right here. So one minus four divided by two is two. So the interference is negative one. So this is negative interference. And as long as you can do the calculation, this is negative interference. And as long as you can do this calculation and you know that observed frequency here is higher when observed frequency of double crossovers is higher than the expected frequency, you're gonna end up with a negative number. So negative interference is the, the state in which you are observing more double crossovers than you expect. So it's, it's not, when I think of interfering, I think of actually inhibiting. So we're having negative interference. In this case, it's actually promoting more double crossovers because we're seeing more than we uh, would have predicted based on the genetic distances alone. And negative interference corresponds with a negative value. So that makes sense. So let's look at positive interference. So positive interference is when we observe less double crossovers than we predict. So positive interference equals um, observing more, no, observing less than we expect. And so how do we calculate that? Interference, same, same calculation that we use for negative interference, but if it's positive interference, it should result in a positive number. So observed double crossover percent divided by expected double crossover percent. Now let's say we observed 1%, but we expected 2%. So this formula says we will um, should have one minus 0 0.5. So interference equals plus. 0.5. Okay, so positive interference. Something seems to be preventing us from seeing the expected number of double crossovers, and it's giving us less crossovers than we predicted. Okay, so that's interference. We won't. We may talk a little bit about the mechanisms involved in interference when we get to the molecular part of this course. Hmm.